Welcome back to Lantern Rouge podcast, Lantern Rouge cycling podcast presented by Zwift. This is the all encompassing French teams, which Arkea, we assume, will now be a, Fran- a world tour team in 2023. Preview we've got Groupama, FDJ, Cofidis, Arkea, and Azure Desert Citroën. Play the music. Allons enfants de la patrie, la joie de gloire. Arrivé. We're back. French teams. <laughs> good All team. Points. Good team. Is that, that one was better. We had it. We got an outtake. We might put it at the end of the season, end of the year for Christmas <laughs> special. You don't want it. The first one I did, I tried to listen to La Marseillaise. Butchered it. Well, I probably still butchered it. Anyway, off season, what have you been doing, Benji? What have I been doing? I'm yeah. back in Belgium. I'm back okay. in Belgium, so I'm happy about that. I've spent a lot of time in the UK with my girlfriend, and uh, I bought a bike. I rode more on my bike. I did some Zwift stuff. I, re- I did my FTPs and so forth. So loads of stuff. I'm just trying to get myself on my bike a bit more and make some content about it. That's my life so far this off season. And to be honest, prepping these podcasts, of course. Yeah, this one had a lot of prep in it. I've lost the plot. Um, I bought a horse. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, it's all it's all happening. It's all happening. I need cycling probably to come back to stop me stop me doing things like that. You bought a manual bike. Uh is that not how a horse is in our eyes? <laughs> I'd be scared to get on this horse, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd get on it. Anyway, speaking of Zwift though, a lot of updates to give you. Urukazi is live, the expansion to the Makuri Islands pack. It looks pretty awesome, to be honest. So go over to the Makuri Islands to explore that and check out check off stages five and six. There's also a cool new feature. Join a Zwifter is back, so you can now join a friend or pro cyclist on their ride that's in progress from the home screen. So in this new version, you just scroll down to just ride near the bottom with plans and you can just join people which i think is pretty good and also a question we asked the other day will holo replays record your pr data during more segments completions including during solo workouts and races the answer is yes they now do uh but the holo replay still only spawn during free rides and pace of group rides but they remember your time yeah. from the segment if you've done it in a solo workout or race so that's the answer to that question, a lot of cool new features, go and check it out. Or if you haven't checked out Zwift, go to Zwift.com and you can get a free seven-day trial. But we'll start with FDJ, Benji. Success or failure? Ooh, 2022 success season. or failure. That's a very good question. And to be honest, we have to go over the season to decide that. So let's start off with the start of the season. Let's be honest, it's a World Tour team, so whether they are successful at Tour de Bessege or Provence is not the biggest deal. Let's start off at the Classics, and we see okay, that... Can I pause there? Sorry. Yes? How do we deal with... Remember, Ineos, we had the big conversation about, well, cycle cross track's important. To us, it's not important, but maybe to their team and sponsors is important. Are we, are we ignoring the French cir- national circuit? For Groupama, yes, because they were so good on the top level that it's relevant. Okay. <laughs> For an Arkea, it's more important. For an Ajax Désert, it might save their season a tiny bit, and so forth. So we'll d- discuss that individually per team, but for Groupama, I'm mainly looking at the biggest races because they were actually prominent in those. Let's say the Classics, for example. Valentin Maruas, podiuming Ronde van Vlaanderen. Sure, it was in the way where Pogacar choked the final, but still, that's a podium and a, and a monument. So. Can't complain there. Next monument, Stefan Kung podiums Roubaix. So that's two monuments in a row podiums for this team. Yes, it's no classics victory, but it's it's very hard to win a classic with the likes of a Stefan Kung. Maduas arguably has more chance because he can finish off races better than a Stefan Kung. And then lastly, when it comes to the monuments, you have the Ardennes, but David Grun misses that because I think, didn't he like stay in Paris Nice for too long because he had yep. hurt his back or something? He did. He nearly OTL'd the time trial, finishing like after Groenewegen. And they're like, that's fine. He'll just like win the stage on Torini yeah. then. <laughs> and that fucked his Ardennes, right? Yeah, indeed. That's true. Grand Tours. In the Giro, they were successful, right, with Amar? How many stages did they win? Three? Yeah, three plus Ciclamino, right? Yeah, indeed. So that is very successful, I would argue. Definitely getting that Ciclamino as well. That's a successful Grand Tour. And we take a look at the Tour de France. Maduaz and David Gaudu, 
perfect duo and the rest of the team supported Godou there as well. Fourth in the general classification at the end. That is uh, higher than I would have expected before the Tour de France started. Did you expect Godou to top five at Tour de France this year? No, I didn't expect him to top five it. Um, I thought that was a really, really good effort. That's outperforming expectations. I wouldn't say the entirety of the Tour de France was a success. Um, I think there were a few occasions and... I don't know. He then uh, he what he punch a guy later where Stefan Kung was chained or not given freedom. I could be misremembering yeah. um, there where he should have been <laughs> punched a guy later. Did he? <laughs> Slight was, exaggeration was of the story. I think they were, were like fighting in the peloton a tiny uh, bit, but it wasn't serious. It wasn't, it wasn't Milano serious. level. Yeah, it wasn't we like Milano Stephen level. Kung. <laughs> um, I also think Pino was a disappointment in the tour because he won a stage in Swiss and the guy just can't get in a break. Um, so maybe other objectives next year, but you know, it was good. Like Godou is so punchy, so, so punchy. Um, they won six world tour races, only two last year. Um, maybe the total wins wasn't more, but as Benny said, like you'll take monument podiums <laughs> over, a couple of passage stages here and there any day of the week. So, yeah, I think from the perspective of performance preparation, I think Groupama seemed to have made big, big strides. Apart from mm-hmm. keeping guys with cooked backs in races a bit too long, uh, like getting riders physically pretty good, I think they're doing quite a good job. Um, now, does that mean their signings, they're signing the best talent for the money? No, of course, I don't think that but um yeah i i think there a lot of things to be even like store benji he was solid right yeah. like he was yeah. as a domestique he i know he wasn't like vuelta but can you think of any riders who underperformed relative to their actual talent this year even pache was really good in Millard. Ooh, that's a good question when it comes to this team there's no one that instantly comes to mind when i look at this team I think that the majority maybe performed on the level. Uh, I I do think that he was there in more important races. He was in the breakaway with Molar a few times in the Velta, that type of stuff. I think Valter is one that stagnated a tiny bit in my eyes at this team. Sure. And maybe going towards Jumbo will free him in that sense. But for the majority of this team, I saw more and more in what they can achieve. And they brought it a step forward. I'm curious to see what... A youngster that was a, was he intern or was he just shoved in in August already? Paul Pinoet, sprinty type, very good youngster. What he can do in the next year, that is very, very much something I'm looking forward to with a lot of the transfers that are, that are coming in that are also the youngsters in the team. So when it comes to 2022, for me, this is a clear success, definitely because this is not the the most budgeted, I'm not sure if that's a word, but the most budgeted French team in the world. So I would argue that with the money they have, they have good results and they performed on world tour level, which we can't say about all the French teams. Yep. I think they can be pretty proud of their season actually. And, you know, showing where that lack of money is, it is quite, it's actually, this isn't a criticism, it's just a reflection of the reality. Astonishing seeing the signings of uh, three of these four teams uh, in that three of them, must have very, very tight budgets because they are literally signing only neo pros or people on min the minimum wage and they are they have big money or bigger money coming off the book. So in respect of Group Palmer, it's all guys coming from their feeder team, yeah. the uh U twenty three Conti team, which has been a powerhouse the last few years, and it's guys going who probably got bigger offers. Elsewhere, like a uh, Guarnieri, Volta, um, and then I think uh, did Guarnieri get a bigger offer, or is he just let go of because he didn't get? I mean, great lead he, he, he'll be on more than the the sixty grand that Samuel Watson's yeah. on, yeah. Um, I guess. But Rue's retired, uh, Duchesne's retired, the mythical ruler, <laughs> and um, Oh, yeah, we forgot they won French national champs TT with your man that they left out for Duchesne. Um, Reichen back, Single Dam. Not sure what's happening with them. Single Dam, I think they're going to have to, they should extend. They need to give him some money to keep DeMar happy. 
what do you make of these? I think going out, by the way, just quickly, uh, as long as they keep single dam going out, it's really vault as the young talented one. Um, but as Benji said, maybe you'll get more out of him at Yumbo. Who do you like in the incoming ones? Because there's two names here, Al, probably for the Anglo speakers, like us three with Watson, but there's two big French names here with a lot of hype around them. Yes, yeah, certainly. Firstly, I do want to uh, approve of you saying that Ramon Sinkeldam should be uh, extended at this team. I think he's vital for yeah. Demaris wins in the Giro as well. I think at least two over the three where Ramon Sinkeldam setting it up as last lead out for the man. And next to that, we hear so many rumors about the BNB project, which Sinkeldam was being rumored for. That project falling apart. If that is happening or not, we don't know at the moment. But if it's not happening, then it would be nice to see Sinkeldam continue at this team with Demar by his side. Now, incoming transfers is what you asked me about. There are some good, talented riders in there. And I think the top three riders when it comes to talent is Romain Grégoire, the biggest one. He's won so many like U23 races that I can barely count them on one hand. And he's a type of puncher character. Is he the type of puncher where you would say he's the hilly sprinter at the end of races? Or would you more look towards the Ardennes for him in the future? Al Philippe 2.0, this kid. Like one flesh Ardennes, Liege U23, those Italian races like Belvedere climbs okay, but not, you know, not that well. Um, yeah. He just. I don't know what his flat sprint is like. I think against the big boys, it's not going to be as good. It might be more like a pay or bill bow. And when I say Alphalete light, peak Alphalete's flat sprint was pretty outrageous. So maybe not quite there, but that's the sort of profile of this rider. Um, and yeah, they got to be really excited about having him on the books only on a two and a half year deal. So, <laughs> I mean, well, no, two year deal rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if Total come knocking, if he has one good year, negotiations will start January 24 for this guy and Total might have a big bag of cash. Exactly. That's an option. But also when it comes to their other youngsters that they signed, Samuel Watson, also a big one in my eyes. Cobble kind of type. I think he top three the um, British National Championships where Cavendish won, if I recall. Yeah, he, he was, was in that group. There. And next to that, he's also a rider that can do well in those in those cobble type races. So I expect something there, ruler type as well. Next to that, cobble stuff. So Fifth expect in something from this guy. Sorry, what? Fifth in Trebro Leon this year against the big yeah. boys. That's the proof already that he can compete in bigger races. Wouldn't surprise me if we see him being a rider that is either send up a road a bit early in the likes of uh, an Omelop at Niesblad or a rider that gets a decent result at top ten at Omelop at Niesblad because his sprint is not terrible either at the end of a race. Next up, we've got Martinez, but not Daniel Felipe. It is Lenny here, little Lenny. And in all honesty, it's a difficult character to talk about because he's such a good pure climber, but he is inconsistent though. And he's a very light climber and that might give him the same difficulties that an Ivan Sosa has on the flat and so forth. But then when it comes to his U23 time trial that he did, it was a pretty good time trial. So I'm really confused of how good this rider can become in the future and what his difficulties are going to be because it's kind of difficult to predict, right? Uh, he's Kenny Elisande, isn't he? He, on paper, should be, but better climber, perhaps, talented? Maybe, yeah. Kenny was pretty good. He topped in a Grand Tour, I think. Yeah. Um, it's tough. It's tough. If you if you're fifty kilos, it's not actually advantageous. Fifty two kilos, like you it's, you have to push so many watts relative to your body weight on rolling terrain. It's just tough. Um, but I think you know it'd be interesting to see how he goes. You know, he's young. Maybe he puts on a little bit of weight, grows a couple of centimeters. I don't know. Um, but uh, Greg was the one I liked the most. Pithy, I like the two. Uh, yeah. I like the two Kiwis, Thompson and Pithy. Uh, Pithy's a sprinter. Really like his profile. Um, I think he, he looks really, really good. And same with Thompson. So I like those two. Um, I also like the fact that the Conti team is – the French – the FDJ Conti team is like doing a really, really good job bringing all these yep. Anzac um, <laughs> kids through. It's one of the best – feeder systems for the Australian and Kiwi guys, Plowright, Pithy, Thompson. Yeah, so 
props to them. And then there's Germani, who was paired with Gregoire a lot, the Italian 20-year-old. Uh, he actually has quite good results himself. I Obviously, I didn't watch every U23 race, but looking at it, I would assume he Shame had to you. ride a little bit for Gregoire. Um, <laughs> so they're all good signings. Will they all be big World Tour winners next year? I would say not, except for Gregoire, it's possible in the right situation. Um, so, But what you see there is no... There's no big signings elsewhere, Benji. So I think it's quite a sustainable model. I think so as well. And also because these youngsters that they are signing have such decent potential that they can become that that world tour level rider that can perform in the next two years already. Like a Watson and a, and a Gregoire are really on that level. And the others are on the level to be able to grow towards being a good world tour rider as well. So these are really talented riders and they fit in that team. And because they still have their sustainable leaders like... The Marston has a contract until the end of next season. Godu's still there for a bit. Those riders, that means for me that it's not necessary to get another rider that is perhaps a spear point for the team in this year. If you can get those youngsters to grow throughout that year and make sure that they arrive when a Godu or a Demar and their contract. And if they decide to leave, they decide to leave, but they can also get extended. There's one rider that is getting, uh, well, n- perhaps not extended at the end of the year. What would you do? Thibaut Pinot ends contract 2023. Gone. Gone? Yeah. Okay. Reasoning? Well, I mean, if your man's, if he's winning two to Swiss stages and capable of winning a Grand Tour stage from the break, and he says, I'll ride for 250K, yeah, he can stay. But I don't know, a little bit of a distraction. Um, paid a lot. And yeah. also, he took a musette from Godou in the Tour de France when it was Godou's yeah. musette, which I, I know that's a complete, it doesn't mean anything about internal team dynamics. But I think he, if you paid a lot and you were yeah. the man. It's a dick move. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I would I would let this be David Godou's pro, you know, project and Gregoire and yeah. Maybe the sponsors wanted to be re-signed. I don't know. Demar's also out of contract. I'd give Demar another couple of years if he can keep planning up uh, Giro d'Italia stages. He's yeah. he's riding still perfectly fine. But Pino, yeah, it's it depends who what else you can do with that money. And I think they can. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't let Pino go to then give two and a half mil to Alaphilippe. Like uh, yeah, not that he's out of contract. I don't know. What would you do? I would ditch Pino as well and see what the Conti team once again delivers. For example, if Gregoire pushes through and is actually decent at the end of next year to be a World Tour level leader, then you can afford to look at your youngsters again and use that Pino money to sign your youngsters and perhaps look at, okay, our lead out for Demar, single them, he's getting a bit older, he's not sustainable anymore, we need to find a lead out instead for him. That's how you can spend that money to make your leaders that you already have stronger in that sense that's what i can think of at least that's how i would see it at the moment but we've spoken a lot about the transfers that this team has done and can make at the end of 2023 but let us talk oh, actually, about just just last question on the would you okay. re, would you if you let pino go would you go hard for laporte or cosnerfois i probably would not i'd rather go for cosnerfront and laporte because i think laporte's Speaking at Jan Bovisma, and you won't be able to level that up, and you might not get the same level of Laporte that Jambo has been getting. So I would argue that Cosnefra might be better off as a selection for this team. But then again, is that going to count to Gregoire, who also yeah. might lead in that area? I, I would go Laporte from a from a roster construction because they, they don't have a finisher. They don't have a classics finisher. They'll have Kung, Watson, all these guys if they improve. They're not winning sprints. And you have Laporte, he can actually finish and sprint. Or you go for the likes of a Vaucolin or Laurence, those riders, True. those youngsters, because those are also running out of contract at the end of 2023, I think. So that would also line up. So there's plenty of options anyway. They, uh, they've they got some time to decide, but hey, they got to be early to get the big ones. That's for certain. 2023, what can Groupama do in 2023? What should be their aims for 2023? I would argue when it comes to the cobbles, it's quite easy. I think it's very hard to grab a victory with the team they have. 
think Maduas has a larger chance of finishing off a race and getting that victory than a Kung because Kung needs to get it from riding away from everybody while Maduas can actually out sprint people. But that being said, I think it would be already a success to repeat what they did in 2022. Like podiuming two monuments is pretty fucking great. Got a podium the tour. It's the it's the one it's the big chance. Like mm-hmm. this is the time for Gudu to podium this tour de France. It has steep climbs which are not always that long. There are descent finishes, punchy finishes, a lack of TTKs, a hilly TT, more mountainous almost TT. I think this is the big chance. If Avon Paul Thomas don't go, then you just got to beat Vlasov and hope one of the other guys crash out and you're third. So I think he's got to go all in for TDF podium. Before 2022, I said that this man could not top five the Tour de France, and then he top five the Tour de France. But I'm going to double down. I don't believe David Gaudu can podium a Tour de France, even if the parkour fits him as well as it does in 2023. I think it would be already a success to top five the Tour again. Like, this team is not at the level where they should necessarily be podiuming a Tour de France to be successful. Doing a top five in that is already successful in my eyes. Am I, am I tr- aiming too low? Um... It, I think fifth or sixth with a stage win they'd also take. I mean, they haven't they didn't win a Tour de France stage this year or maybe the year before. So I think yeah, they Kung won't be going, so he can apply his talents elsewhere. Uh, Mado, as I assume, they will send the. I think they need to win a World Tour one day race next year. They didn't win. They only won stages uh, at World Tour level this year. The there's a lot of World Tour one day races where they're getting thirds and fifths, and that's as I said because they don't really have a finisher. Yeah. Uh, they really need to whether it's I don't Damara Brugadapana or Omloop. I'll count <laughs> that too. I think he should do the early season sprinty classics yeah. um, with Kung as an attacker ahead, and then as you know, as you say in the notes, like get Watson in. Get the young guys in, get Gregoire into the Arden squad, filling in for Volta, um, and and really target those those one days. And then maybe Vuelta, Lenny, Lenny Martinez or Gregoire and or Stora just going for stages. I think for those riders like Lenny Martinez, it kinda depends on what they do throughout the season, I think. Let's say I think I heard a rumor that they would send them to the Dauphine to test them out as like a, a first world to a race. So That'd be a, a fun thing to try out to see what happens there. It depends on the parkour, whether it has a lot of time trial kilometers and so forth. But I would argue that when it comes to those youngers, I agree. Those young riders should go try and ride their first world tour race to see if that works out. Maybe the smaller world tour ones and then we'll decide what to do afterwards when it comes to that. But when it comes to DeMar, that's the biggest question mark for me because the Tour de France has the most sprint stages. So he's going to be very intrigued to do that. But the Giro has the ones where it's versatile that on paper he can survive and that he can actually win stages at. Because at the Tour, I think it will be quite hard for Demar to win stages. So to win, he should go to the Giro, I think. But to be able to compete in as many top-level sprints as possible towards the Tour de France. And we know that Kung's going to the Giro most likely for those time trials. And that Godou's going for the Tour de France for GC most likely. So can Demar even fit in the Tour de France with a sprint train if it should go all out for Godou. And should they even give DeMar the chance if they can top five the Tour de France again? Yeah, like I believe if you have Pagatch or Roglic or Vingegaard and they're actually a favorite to win, you you base the team around, you know, winning the Tour. And even yeah. Jumbo didn't do that last year. They went for green and, and Wout in a lot of stages. If your guy's gone for fifth or sixth, there's space for DeMar. Like... You know, you want to take as many bites at the apple for winning stages. There's yeah. space. Like, he needs Maduaz to pace him or Stora to pace him. And then <laughs> there's a lot of other slots available. <laughs> so, poor old Bruno Armourail. I hope he gets a run. Um, he has a <laughs> tour next year. But, yeah, I think I think this is, a, if you're a fan of FDJ, this is a great little period to be, um, to be hopeful, I think you're quite happy right now. You you yeah. think we got a Tour de France route that suits Godou. 
We've got Damar and Kung still under contract. We've got these young talents locked away for two years. Let's see what they can do. Um, I think it's quite a be quite a nice time to be a fan. Um, but yeah, I still think they'll make a few mistakes, and I, and I hope I don't know the scheduling. To me, the biggest issue is not the level of the riders. It is they will get their riders peaking and going well, and then they'll send them to a race where they have like one chance realistically out of like nine to even compete for the stage win. Um, and yeah. it's like a waste of their race days. So, but anyway, that's FDJ. We'll hustle along. Uh, I'm quietly hopeful for them, as does a Citroën, kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. One of the higher budget teams, according to Lakeep, and judging from a lot of the signings they made in previous years and Citroën coming in, I think that is the case. Now, French teams do pay, I think, higher social contribution costs than other teams, but it's not 50% higher. <laughs> so yeah. they still got a pretty fat budget. And this year, Benji was, apart from Jungles, I think, not the best at all. And Cosnefoy. I think we can line him up to have a decent season in that sense. He started off with second at Am, still winning Montreal. So Colin Fraud did some stuff throughout the season. But in the couple races, they get no results really. I think they got fourth in Omelope or something with either Nassen or Van Avamad, But They don't send him to RVV. Wait, what? They oh, never send Colin yeah. to RVV. They, they should. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> He's like, if Philippe showed that it's Those a puncher's race. Can do it. Yeah, it, it, it is a puncher slash cobble race, and Cosner fucking do both. He's done cobbles at those autumn races, whatever it was, Trobro Leon, and the other one, Paddy yeah. Tour. I think he owed him to Paddy Tour or something when Casper Peterson won it or something. So he they won Britannia Classic. Stuff. Yeah, but that, that that's again punchy type race. I think Cosner should be going to RVV and so forth. That's 100% right. I agree with you there. But 2022 wise, no results in cobble races despite Van Avermaet and Nassen and so forth probably being a big chunk of their salary. I think actually at the end of 2023 that Van Avermaet, Nassen, Michael Scher, uh, Heis van Hoeke, all those riders, Lawrence Nassen as well. So basically their cobble block is all out of contract. So we can discuss in the transfer section of this podcast whether we actually see them extending that and whether they are going to continue following up on that. But first, let's talk about the Grand Tours for a second. No results in the Giro d'Italia, right? I don't remember a thing about Ajazer in the Giro d'Italia. Even Vendrame is gone from my memory. Um, I did they did they have? A, I don't even know what team they. Were they at the race? <laughs> well, uh, I am having a look. I'm looking now who they sent. Felix Gall for GC. Remember? Vendrame, Carmajan, Puyakahan, Nans Patez. They sent their stage hunters, Carmajan, Nans Patez, and just. Just didn't work out. Um, I don't know. Again, like O'Connor should have like. It's always like he came fourth in the Tour French team, so he has to do the Tour, no matter how unsuitable the Tour de France for it is. Now next year, it's better for him. But I think he should really try and do the Giro. Maybe when there's a lot of TTKs in the in the Tour de France, uh, but O'Connor obviously. Unfortunately, he's probably their best rider overall. Um, crashed out of the Tour de France. They did get the stage win with Bob Jungles just after he abandoned. And yeah. Jungles was really, really good. In Swiss, Jungles showed good level. Now, Jungles has been on a lot of money at age 2R, has had sickness or injuries. But then in Swiss, he showed good level. And I think there was a camp apparently is on good level too. No contract extension. Then, so he's like, fine. And remember, guys out of contract, Tour de France, it's like, you know, do or die almost, yeah. especially when you're on the, you know, a lot of money. Wins the Tour de France stage, Dan Lorang, like, and Bora Hansgrohe. Dan Lorang's, a, I think, a trainer there. He's Luxembourgish. Jungles is Luxembourgish. They probably don't even know each other, but I'm going to assume they, they're best friends. They're neighbors, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bora, like, how you going? And, He's off. So one of your best riders for the year then leaves to Bora. Could they have kept him if they – that's the thing, though. Can you criticize a team? It's like if Van Avermaet, Benji, and RVV comes fourth, do you extend him for two years? Um, At a very low salary, yeah? Yeah, true. 
that's the thing. It's all about money, yeah. you know, the money, I guess. But that's kind of not good. Uh, Champazan got a huge offer, so I think it's right <laughs> they didn't. It's right they didn't match him. And Carmagin, that's fine. He's out. So, but then the incoming Tranchant was a stagiaire, and he won a Burgos stage, <laughs> which was <laughs> really good. And there was another guy who was in the break. Uh, Tranchon was the guy with Sivakov, right? And he completely finessed Sivakov in Burgos? Yeah, yeah correct. I like that. Um, but they've obviously <laughs> got no money. Like, oh, yeah. well, they've spent but, it on but, extensions. But legendary Tudor rider, Alex Bourdain signs. He's one of uh, the punchy types. I think um, he's basically like uh, a B-Tech Romain Grégoire, is what I would say when it comes to his rider type. So, so, so Gregoire's a B Tech Alpha Leap. So this guy's a C Tech Alpha Leap. C Tech Alpha Leap. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Cosner Frost the B Tech Alpha Leap. So Gregoire's a C Tech Alpha Leap, and Bodan's the D Tech Alpha Leap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that actually makes a lot of sense to me. Um, <laughs> okay, the team's just not deep. You just look at the. It's compared to eight FDJ. I look at the team, and I'm like, okay, like. This guy's not going to be a world beater, but he's got like he he has some sort of role or function, you know, in in world tour cycling. They have a lot of guys who I'm just like, why? Or a lot of guys who are, you know, NPCs. Random, just yeah, just like they they they're skinny, but they just really shit at climbing. So it's like. What can you do, huh? Um, I know it's one of the worst teams from a budget to roster perspective on in World Tour, and also there's other riders, Benji, like a Stander Wolf, who did have talent and show stuff, and he really didn't progress at 23 to 24. He's about to turn 25. One thing now, I want to uh go further on that. You spoke about Stander Wolf, that's one of the couple riders that is staying. But I mentioned it earlier, Greg van Avermaet, Nassen, other Nassen, Kosnefra, uh, those riders are running out of contract at the end of 2023. What do you think they should do with like a van Avermaet, Oliver Nassen, Lawrence Nassen? And what do you think they should do with a, a Kosnefra on the other end? I actually think Kosnefra is a big risk to give, give a lot of money to. It seems mm-hmm. to me like half the season, the guy is literally not competitive. Now, maybe they're sending him to the wrong races. A lot of the time, I think that's that's true. Um, but Greg is an interesting one because I think it's almost gone too far the other way how much people say Greg is washed. He's actually still an above-average rider. He's overpaid for sure on this contract. He's still an above-average rider. Like most riders don't come sixth in E3 or third in Flanders last year or third in Omlope this year. Now, should you give him another million euro a year? Absolutely not. Um, so from a points perspective, because Benji, this team needs points too. Now, they got the French circuit, so I'm sure they'll be fine, but I'm not sure how many points they got in 2022. I'd have to check. Uh, I don't think it was as good as previous years. So Greg, I would be – it's like if you want to take a big discount, two years to finish your career here, sure. I doubt he will. If I was Greg, I'd go to Quick Step. Um, <laughs> and then Nas and unfortunately Benji, I will, but, I'll be letting him go. All good. But when it comes to uh, Greg Fedor, what you're saying, going to quick step, but then you're going to be the guy that after the transfer is signed, you're going to be like, well, Remco's probably not happy about that. <laughs> no, no, no. He's on, he's on 60K. He actually, he, it's less than the, the world tour minimum. He has to pay them 10K <laughs> back. Um, kind of like Gavin, she has to bring a sponsor. To the <laughs> yeah, team. yeah. And so that's fine. That's fine. My problem is giving Merlier money. And Greg, you know, he will ride for Remco. That's his job too. Uh, Merlier, yeah. I don't think, can help Remco very much. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with the last statement. I think when it comes to the team, I'm also seeing that Greg van Armand should probably be ditched from the team, in my personal opinion, because he's never going to agree with a, a term that is the the 1.1 points hunting type of rider plan on the table i think i think he can have offers from other teams still that will allow him to go for the bigger races because he's still a big name in that sense and can still deliver top five at an rvv with a bit of luck and so forth but 
I would argue that it's the same thing when I with what I said with uh, Grupama before. They should try and invest in a bit more youngsters and a wider base for their squad to make sure they can hunt for points. Like the names I said out earlier, Vaucolin, Alouvel, Laurence, those riders can get 1.1 race points in the team. And there's probably tons of them that I haven't mentioned, like a sprinty type, for example, because that's what we said previous year, I think, when it comes to the weakness of this team. Mark Soto was the only sprinter in this team, and he was able to only basically win every single stage that exists in Poitou Charente, three in a row. But outside of that, didn't do much all season. So they need more of that type of rider that can actually hunt for 1.1 points uh, in the season. And I think they need a secondary sprinter next to a Saro. A Buhani type. Yeah, Buhani's great for points. I mean, I'm just looking at the 2023 roster and, like, this team is terrible. They have one GC rider, O'Connor, who has who has overperformed uh, and I think was unlucky this year. On Solaison, he did career best numbers, I think, in the Dauphiné. He has no support. They have one inconsistent sort of puncher finisher, Cosnefoy, who should do RVV. And as you said, no sprinter, a very old classics core that has generally underperformed contract and just a lot of guys who will come sixth out of seven in a Vuelta mountain break, like Nicola Prudhomme. Like, it's not a good team. They have Vendrami Venturini who are like, not as Vendram is like D Tech Ulysses. Who's who's B Tech and C Tech Ulysses? Ha ha. <laughs> I'll have to come back to you on that. It's just like for the budget they pay for one of the season goals to be like KUM at the Giro, it's just, yeah, it's and they also don't have guys really outperforming their base talent either, like for whatever reason, be it Hananen, um, the Wolf. Yeah, so not a good team at all. What should their goals be next year, Benji? Oh, when it comes to uh, Aj Dezer in 2023, I'd argue that Benoit Kosnafra is once again a key rider in that, where he should try and win a one-day race across both the Cobble Classics and the Hill Classics, instead of just this year doing the Hill Classics. Also, Canadian Classics, add that onto it. So those three Classics blocks, I think he can do well in those Cobble races, even in Omelope and so forth. Those type of races, E3, he should be in those races, the ones that actually have hills in it. Strade, Ardennes, Canadians, that's what I would send them to. Next to that, Tour de France to get perhaps a fight with the yellow jersey going. You think he can compete for the yellow jersey in Basque Country? He should be able to. Um, 2K, 10%, that last climb, Cote de Pique. I don't know, because he, you know, his limit's like five minutes climbing, right? Um, O'Connor, I think <laughs> they'll be going for podium at the tour. No TTKs again, like Godou, it makes a lot of sense. That's pretty obvious that they want a good result with O'Connor at the Tour de France, and just hope that I get. I think yeah, as you said in the notes, they got to just score points. You know, yeah. they might not be winning a lot of races, but if Greg can just come fifth and sixth in the one World Tour one days, I mean, I'll take it if I was them. Because you don't want to put yourself in a points hole, um, yeah. which you don't have the management expertise to get out of. So um, I think O'Connor a lot hinges, a lot of pressures on O'Connor and <laughs> calls him for to win next year. Because O'Connor can actually win races. Um, he's won stages and Tour de Jura cyclist. But yeah, that's all in Asia to our Benji. I don't really have much more to add. It's um, yeah, just not a very deep team. Yeah. I agree with that. They just need a wider base for points. And next to that, the is a gear eight type of rider. A rider yeah. that can do top ten world tour GCs, right? Well, no, if he's even better than that. Like Basque Country was like third or fourth and won a stage. Um yeah. shot by Vingegaard. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of good. Like Tour de France winner. He must respect you if he's chopping you. <laughs> um but yeah, I'm thinking who should they sign next year? With presumably money coming off the books, I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know who should they they should sign. Um, they'll probably just go for a lot of French French riders. Anyway, that's stage you two are coffee. This budget wise, pretty small. They also have the women's team. Um, they survived the relegation battle. They began the season in the relegation zone. 
uh, to remind you. So that was a huge impact on their season. They also had, wait, is Buani on Kofidis or Arkea? Arkea. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a shame for shame for Arkea. We'll get to them in a second. I think Kofidis did pretty well. I mean, they were terrible in the tour. They won a stage of the Vuelta, which is important for them. Kofidis has been a sponsor of the Vuelta for a long time. It's still, and Yoni Zagira was maybe one of the best signings of the season, which we forgot to do in the transfer roundup. Yep. He almost could have saved them single handedly. Uh, Volscheid crashed when he was looking really good. I don't know. For, their goal was to survive. They survived. Anything else is a bonus, like the Vuelta stage win. Agreed. That's what we said at the start. Eh? For a Cofidis, it's much more important, these 1.1 UCI points races, than a Groupama who is not in that survival mode all season. And I agree, Zagiri top tending at Zulia, Parini, stage one at Zulia, the stuff you said, it's it's really good. And Martin's also a part of that with Parini's and Catalonia top tens. I think 14 at the Giro was a failure for Guillaume Martin. He should be doing better. He did try to go for, I don't know, didn't they like all COVID DNF Tour de France? Yeah, that's a bit of bad luck. I was looking forward to seeing Kokar at the Tour de France, not going to lie after that preseason. I don't know, it's team where. The difficulty now, for me, when I look at this team, is when I look at their transfers and what I see for next year, for example. Because if we take a look at the transfers, outgoing, Vilela, Arme, Van Bills, and Boli sign up. Those are, in World Tour, those are NPCs for me, to be honest. And when it comes to the incoming transfers, Lastra from Caja, Nope from Arkea, Mario from Team Nantes Atlantic, and Harrison Wood. And those are also NPCs coming in. So... This is balance zero for me, these transfers, right? It just, it doesn't change a thing about the team. No, it's, they've not brought in really, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know those riders. Um, <laughs> like Wood maybe has good, uh, he's English, so, or British. So let me see, what have you done? <laughs> Very uh, good question. He's quite tall. He's on seg. <laughs> if that's the characteristic. Well, I mean, maybe he's all right. I don't know. I don't know. It's They they do have a small budget. That being said, um, this is World Tour and this is a pro Conti team. They survived because of the French circuit. This is not a good team. Uh, Yoni Zagira was their best rider. And it, it's just... The majority of riders on this team, listeners of this podcast, wouldn't have heard of. I don't know what they do, and um, they just they don't they don't really compete at world tour level properly. Yep. They they don't like. And Isagira is he got extended for the next two years. That's probably pretty smart from them. Um, but like, think about the people who haven't progressed. Victor Lefay. I thought he was going to step up and compete for World Tour victories this year. He didn't. Mm -hmm. um, the Who else is there? Volscheid actually was pretty good, but maybe there's a bit more in him. I don't know. Geshka was good, actually. Geshka, they were unlucky not to get KM. Harada was good. Uh, Geshka came third in Romandy, was it? Yes. Third in Romandy, second in the ITT. I don't know, man. Like... I think these French teams need to do a merger. There are too many French teams. Like, if yeah. they merge the talent, like AG2R, Cofidis, BNB, Arkea, they are all significantly below average World Tour level teams. Groupama's the good one. And yeah. it's just the French circuit's keeping them alive, which I guess is good and sustainable. But yeah, there's little for me to get excited about, frankly, for this team next year. Controversial take. I would argue that with the BNB project being on a on a small short line at the moment that could be decapitated at any point. Controversial take, in my opinion, from my end, would be that it would probably be good for the globalization of cycling that that team falls apart. While it would be terrible for the riders and the staff and so forth, I still think it would be good for the sport in general. 
Well, let's talk. We we're not really going to do a full B and B preview because they're a pro Conti team. But let's start with like what's happening. Apparently, they're sort of nine, ten mil budget or something originally. Um, these French teams have a huge inherent advantage because even if you're not a World Tour team, you have pretty much a guaranteed Tour de France invite, which is the lifeline to sponsor money. B and B have been horrendous, like really, really awful team. Um, they don't like how many wins this year. They didn't win a dot pro even stage this year. They have Jesus. two wins, two wins at a two dot two race, which World Tour teams can't even attend. And then Axel Laurence was the big bright spot of that yeah. team, but otherwise, not a good team. Apparently, not very well managed. And so, when you hear the rumors that Amazon France or wherever want to double their budget. They want to give one of the worst performing teams in cycling an, a bag of eight to 10 mil cash. It doesn't make sense. Think you're a, you're a mid to high level executive at Amazon France or wherever. You, you're not C-suite, but you, do, you liaise directly with C-suite and you're looking at who you want to give money to. And we've just spoken about how FDJ, money's tight, the good team. Arkea, maybe they got a little bit of cash. Cofidus, money's tight. AG2R, I uh, don't know. And you want to give a bag of 8 million euros to B&B. It doesn't make sense. Like, why yep. would you? It doesn't make sense. So I'm not surprised it's falling apart. Now, if, he's, if he does the big release and says, actually, we've got 20 mil budget, fuck you. Carrefour have come on. Well, credit to Pino. But it just didn't pass the sniff test for me. Yeah, and next to that, I think the biggest interest behind the scenes was also that the city of Paris was involved in some sense to promote and sponsor the project behind the scenes. So that was a big part of that added cash as well, which was one of the bigger things behind the scenes. But also, when it comes to Jean Pinot, like the stuff we hear about him as a manager, isn't he the guy like roasts his riders in the media and so forth all the time? Yes. Like, why would I give a fuck about that manager? Why well, would yeah. we invest? Why would someone invest in exactly. a team that is hosted by that guy? All I heard this year was negative things coming out of that team, and then suddenly Carrefour want to give them to eight million euros. <laughs> like that just doesn't make sense. Um, they already nothing changed. It's not like they didn't have Tour de France guaranteed invite, and then they suddenly got it, or they were about to get promoted to World Tour. No, nothing's changed. So it just didn't make sense. So. Cam addition, all those riders, maybe Nick Schultz or Single Dam or whoever was rumored to go there, a bit up in the air at the moment. Um, there's a women's team that's supposed to be happening too. Yeah, exactly. And an aspect to that is I think I saw Charles Marceau, which is like uh, a French journalist on that's on Twitter from Velo Club du Net. He's a guy that is is critical of BNB throughout the year, but the criticism that is valid in my eyes. Sometimes there's a tweet that might be a bit like, okay. This is like on the edge of being a bit too critical, but most of the criticism he gives to BNB throughout the season and Pinot and so forth is valid. And I think he mentioned the other day on Twitter that some riders involved with the women's team and also next to that, um, staff members of that team that were supposed to be in the BNB team are reportedly look going to other teams to be, well, the agents of them are going to other teams, offering them to other teams. So... I would say that that project is falling apart to me. I, I hope for the staff and the riders and so forth that it's not. But on the other end, it's probably not great to have that team in cycling. It's Darwinism, man. Like, these... Again, listen, I like FDJ. And to be honest, this is complete. We're, we're so far off coffee this talk now, but I'm going to do my little rant because I didn't have another space to say it. French fans deserve more french teams there are more french races there are more a larger percentage of the french public is interested in cycling professional road cycling and the races are easier to put on and when you compare that to the world championships in australia and like i went back for that and then like i've been like smaller french races in france like you know we can talk all we want about expanding the sport but at the end of the day people are more interested in france and belgium and Italy, and Spain, and it's easier to put races on there, and so they deserve more World Tour teams, even if they aren't as good now. Do they deserve, um, should teams like B&B &B and 
total, should there be six French World Tour teams? <laughs> I would say uh, when they're not that good, like PNB, then probably not. But, you know. Three. Three is a good amount. Yeah, three is a good amount with the Pro Conti one that gets a wild card too. Um, yeah. But anyway, BNB, I think Benji and I are both a little bit uh, dubious about what's going to happen there could completely fold. I mean, I saw crazy rumors that he like applied for a Conti license mistakenly or something. Um, completely unverified, but oh, maybe if you pay $8, $8 it could be verified. Anyway, confident. <laughs> what uh, should their aims be in 2023? I, I have a Guillaume Martin hot take I've been sitting on. Ooh, I'm very scared of a Guillaume Martin hot take, to be honest. I really am. I um, I think Guillaume Martin, GC at the Tour de France, should aim for a top 10. You're going to be like, oh, he's going to put him the Tour de France. Is he? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> if he does. Listen, Guillaume, this is a message to Guillaume Martin, okay, <laughs> the philosopher. You might love Socrates. You might love Plato. You might have written a book. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was great for points this year and the last couple of years. Unfortunately, you don't seem to know much about periodization and performance preparation because you race too much at a good level. You race consistently at a good level, but you're never at your peak 80 race days this year and there's never, you know, your man, his training camp for the Giro was in Sicily. Now, I'm not a geographer, but I don't think there's a mountain over 2,000 meters in Sicily. So unless he is in an altitude tent that he brought to the island or they sorted for him, that's no altitude camp. He did 80 race, no, sorry, 80 race days this year, 80 last year in 2020, 68. I don't know how the fuck he managed to do 68. He must have done any, because there's about 50 races in 2020. <laughs> 2020, he was at his best physical level ever. Okay, you look at stage four Tour de France. He's not a. He comes out of the break, right? Oh no, sorry, they were first. He comes out of the break. Third Mont Ventoux challenge. Good at Tour de Lain with top tens in two stages. Tour de Lain was a serious race. Third in the Dauphiné, and then third on the Orsier Millet stage, eleventh in a very very competitive Tour de France that year. Please just do sixty five race days. Please have some rest. Do an altitude camp either side of the Dauphiné and you you can top 10 the tour. Just stop doing every single race. And I know that they need the points this year. Next year, you just got a little bit of a buffer. It's not as pressing. And I think if he targets it better, he can get more out of himself than doing every single goddamn race. What are your thoughts on that, Benji? I'm mixed about it. I agree with the fact that he's riding too many races to get the peak out of himself. But I do believe that they can't step away from the UCI points being the most important thing in their thing. Because their team is not good enough to compete at World Tour level. And perhaps, yeah, if he if he goes for 65 race days, he can at least become prominent in World Tour level and so forth. But in general, the team is not wide enough and not strong enough when it comes to the, a lot of spear points in the team to be able to do that. So... I think they just need to continue that UCI points battle while their team evolves throughout the next three, three years. Because right now they are a, a pro team in World Tour's clothing. And that means that they will have to make sure they can gain enough UCI points in the first year so that if they evolve to a team that has actually a World Tour team with more spear points, that if that goes wrong, they still have the buffer from the first year. Because... The first year of the three-year cycle is arguably one where you can get an advantage on teams that don't expect they'll be in the in the relegation system, right? Well, yeah, are DSM going to start farming points next year? I don't think they will. And yet they are in very serious risk of relegation at the end of the next cycle. So if you are Cofidis, you know, I agree. Like, Cockard still needs to do his Tour de Vendée sort of French circuit one-day races, which are very profitable. I just think if you take away 15, 20 race days off Martin, get him training a bit better. Yeah. Um, if he goes from 10th to 5th, I think he needs to try and get 5th in two World Tour GC one weeks. That's the goal. That's not that crazy. Okay. Fifth in two of them, target the right ones. Um, and he can still do Fournardes Drone Classic. He's great in, great in those. Cockard, 
aim, win a world tour race. You just find the weakest sprint. Why isn't it, did he do Romandy? I don't remember. Let's see. He better have done it. He better have done it. He did not. <laughs> so, Cockard, please do Catalonia, do Romandy or Swiss and get this poor man a world tour win. That's the goal for him. Izaguirre, it's got to be points and world tour one weeks, as you said. Um, what else? Who? Do, what are they doing at the tour? Do they have a sprinter? Cockard. Lecoq yeah. has to do, yeah, Romandy and the tour for Lecoq. I'm on the sector of Kokar should be doing the likes of a, a Paris-Nice style race, depending on the parkour, eh? to get something going there. I know that he can win a stage of Romania and Catalonia, but their sponsors don't give a fuck about Romania and Catalonia, and the points that you get from a stage win in those races are not the equivalent of a, a 1.1 race, so wouldn't he be better off winning a, a French one-day race at that time? Yeah, but I just think he's not going to win the Paris-Nice stage if Jakobsen or Wout or whoever's there, you know, like if... If they have math, he's just he needs to go and sprint against Hater and Bevan at Romandy. Um, mm-hmm. I agree, but isn't Romandy is it francophone region? I don't know. <laughs> if Romandy, Belgian, so okay, mate. you can't do Swiss if they're going to Liechtenstein and in the German speaking part of Switzerland. But if Romandy's in the French speaking part, he can do Romandy. Okay, <laughs> so you know, there's the maths for you. I think, as you said. Get a good buffer. I think Volscheid, I'd like to see Volscheid podium a World Tour one-day race. I think it's possible. If who's your man, he, you know, he's not a bad rider, but um, the Total Energy guy who, Dries van Gestel. Van Gestel, yeah. Can he get in a move like that one or like the one with Narvaez and Laporte in Kerner? I know it's not World Tour race. I think he, I want to see that um, Hot from Volscheid. Volscheid will podium Paris-Roubaix. I see it, actually. I think he was... I see it, to be honest. Going in the breakaway early? Yeah. He's undervalued because he was injured during those races in 2022? But he was better when he wasn't injured than he was the year before. Ha-ha! Exactly. So, you're getting it. All right. Benjamin Tomar. What's he do? World Champs track after the tour? He's for bankrupt certain? after paying that motorbike rider in, what was it, stage 15, the stage Philipson one? What happened? Oh, yeah, yeah, the motorbike yeah, yeah. Literally, motor, like, dirty paced him for, like, the last 5Ks of his stage, the most outrageous <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah, anyway, points, that's Colfidus. Um Maybe try and get it. I, 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 the reason I say they need to do something a little bit different is if you keep doing what you do, I've always done, you'll get what you'll always got. If they keep doing what they do, they'll survive. Sure, they'll su- probably survive, do well in the French circuit, but they won't get any more money. No sponsor, unless they're really good business-wise in the background, is going to go, you know what? You know, I really liked how you came seventh in GC at Tour de, Tour de Suisse, Jan Izaguirre. Would you like some more money? Like they Sponsors see headline things, and I think you need a few more of those headline things of a Guillaume Martin doing standing on the podium somewhere or Volshine, as he said, at Roubaix to get a little bit more money in the door and then maybe you can make some more signings and that's how you improve. Anyway, let's call for Arkea promoted easily in the end. Well, a little bit of a little bit spicy at the end with Quintana's 450 Tour de France points scrubbed off the board, but they got promoted. Uh... It's not actually looking good for them next year, though. But before we get to that, the season, Benji, that was their one goal. It's a success, no matter what else happened. Yeah, exactly. Next to that, they did have some results. Stopped at a Roubaix, pretty significant for Laurent Pichon. Who'd have said that before the season started? I wouldn't have. He was in an earlier move, if I recall correctly, but still a strong race. Rouhani Podiming, Brugge de Pana, I think, behind Jakobsen and Ewan. Then we have Ardennes, no results in those races. Maybe the addition of Jean Poussin can get him a top 10 in those races in 2023. Grand Tours skipped the Giro for the 1.1 races, which is a good decision in hindsight. Tour de France, Tramadol-driven uh, Tramadol driven Quintana disqualified. So not much after the equation is solved. He was great on Granon, though. Yeah, with Tramadol. Yeah, but <laughs> flying, though. 
<laughs> if Vincenzo and Ibley had trauma all in the year, he would have won the year. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe actually. <laughs> they won Trobe Orleans, which is in Brittany, which is where I think it's pretty important for them to win. Uh, Buggy was quite nice, uh, albeit a little bit. I think scheduling could have been optimized a little bit differently. Um, he won a stage at Torreno, but he was third in Brabant, so 19. He, he was a points weapon for them this year. Uh, Warren Bargui, so he was well worth his money. I am not sure he's been extended. He's out of contract. Uh, if they don't extend him, they're insane because this man is a thousand points. Like, yeah, he might not have scored a thousand. He scores a lot of points. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they they did what they did, and again, it's like, what's the plan here? Like survival is not just an end of itself. Like the plan is to to get somewhere. And I think at least they seem to have more money. One would think they signed Decker from Yumbo. Well, let's just go to their signings. There's more talent, in my opinion, Benji, going out than going in. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case. Nairo Quintana is not being extended after his extension was announced initially. I think Cus has recently had declared that they don't overturn his disqualification either, so not good on the books of Quintana. He should have done the world tour. I said at the time, it's like, mate, you aren't winning that appeal. Like, it was two tests. You're not winning the appeal. You're lucky yeah. you didn't get the three-month suspension because it was two separate occurrences, and you could have done the world yeah. to showcase yourself. Sorry, go on. Agreed. Um, if one on Bargill is also outgoing. I agree that it's also other talent going out. Roma Hardy, I don't care. He's retired. Anacona, Dyer Quintana, Flores, yeah. those are just attachments of Quintana's body. Exactly. Connor Swift, that's a big deal. Losing him is yeah. a lot of points and a big rider, I would say. One of their most prominent riders. Marcus Spire, I kind of forgot what he does. So I don't know anymore. I don't know if it's good or bad, if he's leaving or not. Ben- Benjamin de Klerk, Benjamin, obviously a great rider. And uh, Christophe Noppel leaving to cover this. Now, incoming riders. Sean Poussin from Ajazer. Big salary, apparently. Yeah. Christian Rodriguez from Total. Total then ditched him out of the Vuelta squad because he was going to, uh, to Arkea. That was a bit of a, a douchebag move by Total Energy. Yen to Biermans from Israel Premier Tech. I expect that to just replace the 100 points that Christophe Noppel had and is leaving the team. So Yen to Biermans joining can replace that, but that doesn't do much for the team itself. David Decker could really be a good rider for those 1.1 races if they can if they can get him right. Because at Yumbo, he never got the opportunities, right? But he also didn't necessarily prove to deserve the opportunities, or am I wrong in that? We kind of regressed like a lot of abandons. He did 34 race days this year. I'm just saying DNF, 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 DNF. Maybe he had a crash, a bad one at some point. But yeah, his Neo Pro year, he burst onto the scene with two seconds at the UAE Tour. Um, and before then, you know, he won, he came third in the Samar when he was like 22 years old, which is a 1 1 race, quite a, a decent level one. So, yeah, that's the plan, I think, is he's he's Hofstetter 2.0, is what they want to make him into. Um, and if he can be Hofstetter on, on probably what they, they've signed him on, I think that's a very, very good move. I think Shampoo San is not who they think he is. Uh, the Bears yeah. are not who we thought they were. The Bears are who we thought they were. Champersin will be who I think he is. They have signed Clement Champersin to be a GC rider. 24. That's shocking. French. He rode for G. Remember, this guy's ridden for GC in races. Okay? Yeah. Like he has tried for GC in races and he can't do it. He won a stage in the Vuelta last year. The you know the famous stage came back. He He's a one day racer in my opinion, uh, and not at top level either. I think if they make him target GC, uh, he will fail and he will not score very many points either. Like his whole Vuelta, he scored 20 points and that could put them in a hole. And he's on a, a fair chunk of change too. Rodriguez is a little bit different. Um, I think quite unprofessional, how Total handled that. The guy did 37 race days and was really, really good at like Andalusia where he came second and then they just cut him out of the rest of the season. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because he had the temerity to leave to another team. But yeah, I, I, this is why I'm skeptical about this team, Benji, because they've got promoted. 
they've got the money, and then immediately I can see what they're doing with their signings, and I don't like it. I agree with that. The only light point I'd see with Deschamps Poussin is him being able to get top 10s at Tour, Tour de Lain and Tour du Var, but that's not why they signed him. That's not the level of salary. He for ninth at Tour de Lain. I don't know what he's on, <laughs> but, you know. It's probably it's in that me. region when it comes to Arkea. So that's fucked. Like, <laughs> the guy should be on 250, 300K. Is that too much even? What happened? He can get a ground tour stage win. I think 250k is good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, that's not the word. I'm just saying you can get well to stage wins. 70k. If you pick yeah. the right rider, 70k, get you a well to stage win, Giro stage win, no problem. Gino, Mato, O'Connor, Vine. This goes on. Guys, they're obviously on bigger deals, all of them now, but yeah. Uh, so that being said, None of that matters. If Champersan fails, but in the background, and this is sort of what we don't cover typically on the daily recaps or whatever, in the background, if Decker is and Hofstetter are just ripping apart the French national circuit, yeah. Biermans is coming fifth in the sort of the Cobbley, the Grand Prix de Nain, GP de Nain races. <laughs> if they're all doing that and they stay alive, then, you know, it's fine. But like who's what's the goal next year, Benji? Do, do they go for Cavendish if they have the money? I think that's a, an option that they should probably still go for. And maybe a one-year deal, I would say. I wouldn't yeah, sign yeah, him for yeah. three years at Arkea. But if BNB falls apart, then Arkea is actually rumored to be one of the teams that's intrigued by Cavendish. So if that ends up happening, that would be an interesting aspect. Now, British lead out, man. Regardless of Cavendish, I think it's just... Do the same as last year. Go for UCI points. Year one of the three-year cycle is a good moment to start doing that in French and Belgian one one races and try and see how you can evolve your team in the next three years to make sure that you can compete for better races at the end of that cycle. Because they just arrived in World Tour. In some sense, it's logical that they shouldn't be competing at the top level of World Tour yet. But the riders they signed aren't going to change that. So they need to change that with better signing over the next three years while establishing a decent amount of UCI points along the way already. So that's how I view their future right now. Am I wrong in that? Uh, I, I think Christian Rodriguez is pretty good. Um, he, I quite like, I know it was only Andalusia, and he is 27, but, you know, if Yumbo Visma signed this guy, I'd be like, ooh, they might. Rodriguez. What are they, what are they, pardon? Rodriguez. Yeah, exactly. He's the better Rodriguez. Um, <laughs> he'll probably do well to GC, one would think. Uh, now that Arkea, and, and it's more difficult now. They can't pick and choose. They have to do the Giro. They have to do all these races. They can't turn down invites. Um, so that's going to be difficult for them to manage. I think winning more than one World Tour race will be, you know, as a goal, winning three or four, probably because you look at Total Energy, they they're winning more than more than one World Tour race. They really stepped up in twenty twenty two this year. Uh, Buani, that being said, if they don't get Cavendish, everything should really be around Buani for the Tour de France, to win a Tour de France stage. That's their probably yep. the best chance to win a stage. It's unlikely, but... And Champoussin stage win? In the Tour. Probably in the Giro, right? Yeah. I mean, they're probably going to send him to do GC at the Tour. Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. I just fucked Well, that. they will, right? They'll be like, no, like... <laughs> they were fucking stupid, eh? Well, what else can you? They, you've already signed him. Um, <laughs> can you get a refund? Can they like get the receipt and just go back to the team he came from and be like, please? Take the Quadra don't do refunds. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, give me no give backs. Um, Is it the shampoo sand thing? Might there have been like a deal together with Quintana or some shape or form? And now Quintana doesn't say, but they have to keep Champoussin. Is there some deal like that that could work? That it could have worked out for this to happen? I don't know. I've no. I doubt it. Uh, I don't really know. I think they no uh, French young talented rider. They want him. That's. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, if I was Arkea, <laughs> nah, I shouldn't say it. Uh, you can get Quintana on a discount now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Never a better time to negotiate. <laughs> Never Nicolanga a better time. Lopez? Pardon? Wants to yeah. leave Astana rumored? Lopez? Yeah, get them both. 
That's some points. <laughs> even even if you're without tram at all, yeah. you're still gonna. You know, you don't have much else. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think. I think if you if you do that, if you walk into the MPC annual board meeting, <laughs> he's in dirty looks. So, um, that's not happening. But yeah, would it be cheaper to get Quintana on with Tramadol and risk it again than to have him on the salary last year? Are we going into the dark side right now? <laughs> no, no, no. You can't do that. Um, <laughs> no, you obviously like. Well, that's the problem. Like. It's a bad look for the team. Yeah, for sure. And this, it's not technically anti. It's not technically an anti-doping violation now, but but let's be honest about it's, it. It's gonna be put on the wire. It will be. It will be at some point in the near future. So, yeah, uh, like I'm not. But realistically, obviously they've had to cut ties, and you know yeah. that makes sense. But yeah, that's uh, okay. Next year is score points. Put yourself in the best position to win a Tour de France stage with Buani. Hope that Capio, Louvel, uh, and Hofstetter can step up in like a Brugge de Pana. Like I think if there's just a really nasty cobbled couple of weeks with foul weather and just some big riders not attending, I think they could win a messy, messy world tour race or at least Turner, it's got to be like Hofstetter and Lavelle. They seem to thrive in that shit. So, uh, I uh, I think they have a little bit to be excited about with the classics. To be honest, every time you say Hofstetter, I think about Leonard from Yumbo. <laughs> Is there Hofstetter and Hofstetter? Hofstetter, yeah. Hofstetter, Ugo. Anyway, I Ugo. Could, how, so Lavelle's twenty three. Um, Ugo is 28. He still, you know, had his best season last yeah. year. I think the classics team is, you know, is is fine. Vukala, yeah, hope for something there. Um, and probably try some. Like if they sign Cavendish on, I don't know, 500 plus 500 bonus if he wins a tour stage, I do it. I think I do it. McClay yeah. could get it done for him. I think so as well. Perfect lead out for it. And I think you can find some other riders in the team that can also be part of that lead out. Yeah, I see it happening. It would be a good team to go to and it would be fun to see him at the Tour de France to hunt for his uh, his record that I don't give a fuck about. All right. Eddie Merck's son, not happy. Um, <laughs> the, well, no, nah, Benji's not actually Axel Merckx, who apparently has turned down the Lotto Destiny role. Um, that's the French World Tour teams. We're quite excited about FDJ. Skeptical re- uh, the other three, but Total we haven't mentioned, and we won't go into depth on them. But they they got money, they got good equipment, they improved the most of maybe any team at this level from 2021 to 2022. If they make another step up of half that, they will be probably the second best French team in 2023. So Total have got. I think a better trajectory than a, the majority of these teams. I expect them to get promoted quite comfortably in 2026. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think if I was a sponsor, I would be probably, probably putting a bit more money into Total. Actually, no, that's not true. If I was a sponsor, I'd put more money into FTJ. Um, that's where I would yeah. go with it. But yeah, Total, look out for them next year. They won... A fair few World Tour races this year. They had good plans too. Like they picked the stages correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so look for that to continue in, in next year and Van Herstel and points and all that good stuff. But yeah, they're the French teams. Um, any last hot takes, Benji, like a, a David Gadou Tour de France podium? I don't believe he can podium. I think... Um, I don't know, man. Like... I would like to say like a hot. I said I. I think I said a hot take at some point during this podcast, but I completely forgot what my hot take was. Do you remember it? No, because I don't. Uh, Anybody remember Volscheid Paris Bay podium? Yeah, exactly. Volscheid is going to podium Paris Bay. It's going to happen. Whatever you think, it is going to happen, and uh, that's my uh, idea of the esteem so far. 
I think... Um, well, they've changed bikes. Okay, I forgot about that. Sorry. I think the Mars is going to be sent to the Tour de France and won't win the single stage. Yeah, I think that's probably right. And then he can ride. Then oh, so two. So what is it next year? It's an odd year. So then he does a new, he does a season recap book. Says that everyone's taking too much caffeine because he failed at the tour. And then he goes to Giro next year, wins three stages in Ciclamino. That's the cycle we're on, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, we're on Bianchi. They've changed from Canyon. I think Hofstetter wins Brugge de Panna. Um, okay. So, or Dwarz Duel. Nah, Dwarz Duel is too hard. Anyway, he wins Brugge de Panna. That's our French teams. Uh, previews for 2023. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think there will be, there's a lot of big riders out of contract on these teams in 2023. A lot of their big money tied up is coming off the books or could be extended at 2023. So next year, look for who they're signing with. I think Alaphilippe's still under contract, but there will be some big moves on these teams. I think next year, yeah. this year, the transfer window seemed a little bit light for a lot of these teams not much action anyway thanks for listening as always go check out zwift if you haven't already and we'll see you with maybe a german team in the next episode ciao